Are you tired of playing McCree in the double shield and not being able to find any impact? Does it make you mad that you can't play one of the coolest DPS characters in the game, McCree? Well, listen up, because in this guide, I'm going to be teaching you how to have maximum impact on Flank McCree. My name is Coach Mills, and in this guide, I'm going to tell you everything you need to be thinking about in order to execute these flanks, get picks, and easily secure teamfights. Do you want in-depth guides telling you everything you need to know to improve? Then come give our website a shot. Gameleap.com has hundreds of guides over every character in the game to ensure that you're prepared for any meta. Every single guide is made by Grandmaster players, so you get the absolute best tips and strategies out there, all in the same spot. So what are you waiting for? Come check us out in the links down below. Now, the most important thing that you need to know in order to fully execute flank successfully is timing. Timing should dictate when you flank, and knowing the correct timing to flank is the difference between a good McCree or a McCree that will get little to no value out of a flank and could even throw the next team fight. Here are some things that you should be thinking about to know if it's the proper time to engage a flank. For one, are the enemy team actively pushing your team? Often, this is an opportunity for you to push the flank. Creating that crossfire can easily secure team fights, and the enemy teams aren't actively looking for you because they're engaging onto your team. If it's a short flank, this is a flank time where you can take a flank and take an angle in order to get picks and really push damage into their backline. Things you need to keep in mind is don't flank too early. If you flank too early, often you'll run into the whole bulk of the enemy team. This is a problem because then you'll be 2v, 3v, 4v, 1 you'll be able to do nothing, and you'll often get picked. Now, a flank that happens too late will often not be fast enough in order to save your team, or it doesn't create enough value or create enough pressure to pull the front line off of your team. In this way, you leave your team to a 5v6, and often your team will lose the team fight before you execute the flank fully. Keep this in mind, the sweet spot is not too early to where you run into the full enemy team and not too late to where the enemy team has already pushed past your team and won the team fight. If you could actually execute the flank just as the enemy team is engaging onto your team, this is the perfect opportunity because often the tanks are pushed up and the DPS are trying to do express damage to your team. Often the supports will be in the back line and because of McCree's fast fire rate and ability to two tap someone if you get them in a headshot, it is extremely possible to execute these flanks. Really keep this in mind, you're going to need some practice in order to get these flanks right, but once you master the timing, then you're one step closer in order to execute these flanks and actually secure team fight wins. Now you might be thinking, why even flank at all? Shouldn't I just stay with my team and produce a certain amount of damage from the front line? This might be a mentality, but flanking is actually extremely powerful on a character like McCree, and I'm going to tell you why. The first thing you need to understand is that movement is extremely powerful in Overwatch. If someone's actively dodging you, it's insanely hard to headshot them or do any damage to them at all. This is because of how fast movement is in Overwatch. That being said, if on McCree you actually hit all your criticals or consistently hit shots, your time to kill is extremely low. What flanking truly does is it creates that opportunity for you to get a kill and shoot people who aren't actively trying to dodge you. That element of surprise can help you finish a duel before they truly are engaged in one. This means that you can get a pick before anyone can react to you. And because of this, because your team is actively engaging in a team fight, if you flank and create tons of pressure or get a pick at the back line, it puts a ton of pressure on the enemy team to split their focus. This allows your front line to have more space and adequately push into their team and it gives you more space because not the whole enemy team can push into you. Flanking creates this pressure and can allow you to get these picks even through movement. Shooting someone when they're not actively dodging you is extremely comparatively easy and can allow you to get headshots and two tap someone with McCree's fast rate of fire. Now I need to be clarifying something with you. These flanks aren't hard flanks. And the difference between a hard flank and an off angle flank is this. So a hard flank often is done by a Genji or a Tracer, and they are from the backside. You come from behind the enemy team and try to hard commit value into the backside. The reason that McCree can't easily execute hard flanks is simply due to his mobility. Unlike something like Genji or Tracer, they can't adequately escape from behind enemy lines. What you want to do is be flanking 90 degrees to the left or right maximum, and this is because if you decide that the flank is not something you want to commit to, you can back up, roll away, and regroup with your team. This also makes it so you're not too far away from them, so that if you need help, you can get it. If you are fully commit in their far back line, not only can you not escape if things go wrong, but you have no help from your team. Something else you should really keep in mind when taking these off-angle flanks. Try to hide behind natural cover, and make it so that if you want to, you do not have to fully commit to a flank. 
The first couple shots of a flank are usually by surprise. In this way, that is your opportunity to dictate whether or not it's a flank worth pursuing or a flank that you need to retreat from. Whether or not you hit your first couple of shots in a flank can be the deciding factor in whether or not you can push up onto the enemy team and go all in, or if you should adequately retreat because you didn't get enough value to justify the flank. The element of surprise is huge here. Often what a flank does, it gives up positional safety near your team for a surprise attack that can potentially kill the enemy team and can get value instantly before they react. In this way, if you play behind natural cover, you can easily decide whether or not it's something worth pursuing or worth retreating from. The reason that this is really powerful on McCree is unlike other DPSs, McCree demands respect at close range. After you commit yourself further flank, if you back away behind natural cover, often most DPSs will not chase you. The reasoning here is because of flashbang, McCree can easily 1v1 any DPS from close range. So, if they chase you, often that could be an opportunity for you to get a pick and continue on the flank. Be unpredictable. Don't allow them to know whether or not you're fully disengaging or if you're just waiting for them to sue you for an opportunity to get a pick on them in the same way. McCree can easily flip the tables on someone who doesn't expect them, so keep this in mind. Because of Flash Double Headshot or Flash Fan the Hammer, you could easily kill any 250 HP hero or less if they come in to pursue you. Now, there are a few things that you need to be worried about. Tanks, such as D.Va or Roadhog, can easily come pursue you, and you can't adequately one-shot them. So, when you make a flank and you identify that one of these heroes can chase after you, you need a hard disengage because you cannot win these fights. And if you don't disengage, they can easily pursue you and you could become a liability for your team. Now, I want to explain the mentality of when you want to all in a flank. Now, the term all in means instead of retreating or using your role to disengage, you use your role for more ammo and you hard commit to the angle of a flank in order to fully win. You only want to hard engage when you think you could actually get multiple picks and when you can completely secure a team fight. Now there are some indicators when a hard flank will be successful and I'm going to break down some examples for you. Okay so first, let's say you're flanking a Mercy plus a Hanzo. When you look at them, the only character you actually fear there is Hanzo. Hanzo could one shot you from a long distance away and because he has a Mercy with him, you really need to burst him down. After you peek from your natural cover, this is the opportunity for you to kill him because he doesn't know you're there. Try to two-shot him, one in the head and one in the body or a follow-up in the head. In this way, he'll die instantly. Now, if you retreat, the Mercy can easily res the Hanzo, making your flank get low value. And you're not afraid of the Mercy. So in this way, if you fully commit and roll in to finish off the Mercy as well, this is a way that you can completely secure this team fight. And now that two people are gone and your team are still there, you can easily fully commit and go all in on the back line, trying to do as much damage and get as many picks as possible. In this way, your value can become amplified. Now, let's take that exact same situation and you miss your first two shots on Hanzo. In this way, you need to quickly disengage from this flank because you identify that it's not a flank that you could adequately win. In the same way, if you're flanking two DPS characters and you kill one of them, now you're taking a 50-50 with the second one and it's up to you to decide whether or not that's something you need to disengage from or you want to hard engage him in order to try to win the 2v1. Essentially here, after the surprise factor wears off, at that moment you need to specifically decide whether or not this is something you should hard disengage to or go all into. The judgment is up to you and deciding whether or not something is worth pursuing or it's something that you should instantly retreat from is the mark of whether or not your flanks will become more successful or unsuccessful. A common mistake I see many McCrees make when trying to engage a flank is instead of using those easy to hit shots and trying to two shot people that don't know they exist, they get too close and engage with a flashbang. Now, a flashbang can give value, sure, but if you need to disengage, you're too hard committed at this point. And if you do disengage, the enemy team knows that your flashbang is off cooldown so they can easily pursue you. Instead, if you focus on your aim and try to get shots from safety, then you have your flashbang still to either roll in and try to get consecutive kills on the enemy team with your flashbang, or you have your flashbang as a deterrent for pursuers. So in that way, the threat of your flashbang can not only guarantee you more kills in succession to your initial kill, but it can also protect you in case the enemy team wants to pursue you. Now another mistake I see is when people try to hard commit with high noon. Now, committing with high noon on a full flank can get value. However, there's a few things that you need to think about. For one, is there enough pressure on the front line to fully distract the enemy team from focusing you in the back line? The thing is here, you're heavily counting on this high noon getting value. However, if you get slept, headshotted, or CC'd in any way, you could potentially get no value. The only way you're gonna get value out of a hard flank like this is if the enemy team is actively engaged in a fight with your team. Besides this, if you're set up from another ultimate from your team, this can be a way to get value. Things like Grav or Graphitic Flux can easily set you up. 
Now, this requires communication between you and your allies, so don't try to flank hard on your own. Often it can get no value. At ranks such as platter below, sometimes these hard flanks get value. This is due to the fact that the enemy team aren't properly punishing you. Keep in mind that as you rank up and the skill level of the people around you improve, the amount of these flanks that are successful will become far less. Hard flanking in this way leaves you with very little outs, and you're relying on being able to get off a high noon when you're standing completely still out in the open. If you decide to do this, keep the other factors in mind that I've talked about. Traditionally, it is better to only commit to off angle flanks instead of doing full flanks. You want your flanks to consistently get value, and if some flanks get value and some of these hard flanks do not, it will often mean that you'll be inconsistent in your games. Consistency is the most guaranteed way to gain SR and rank up. If you're consistently making these smart flanks and don't hard commit unless you see an opportunity to, this can allow you to actually win convincing team fights and can adequately bring value. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. My name is Coach Mills and until next time. Do you want to develop yourself as a player whose skill is not only adaptable but transcends multiple metas? Don't worry, we got you covered. GameLeaf.com is the only place where you'll find skills that work you from the ground up so that you can have the solid fundamental that can transition through any meta that you can come across. Not only that, but we have hundreds of videos that stem from in-depth guides to tips and tricks that can help you be prepared to dominate your ranked environment and get that sweet, sweet SR. We're so confident that our product will help you that we offer a 10-day money-back guarantee. Come check us out risk-free in the links down below.